Hello, everybody. Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all. Now, welcome back again to Leisure Suit Larry 2. Oh, boy, where do we leave off? You'll notice that Larry is now blonde and in a bikini stuffed with soap, as one does. Though I think bikini stuffed with little soap bars are probably more of a weapon than a, uh, than an actually a piece of apparel. Hey! Oh, God, stop that. You'll also notice that, thankfully, the more times you have to walk through that stupid jungle scene, the shorter it gets. And then eventually, you saw it, you got through the whole thing in about, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, but still sucks. All right, so we tried to get past the KGB agents last time, and we couldn't, because while our disguise is pretty good, we are still too hairy to be considered a real lady. It's the 80s. I thought I could come back to this barber and maybe he could either shave me or wax me or something. But I talked to him and nothing doing. But apparently all I have to do is just sit down in his chair. Is there anything you can do about my excess body? Or should I talk more like a, a femme, Larry? Is the they, they both sound the same. Is there anything? <laughs> so, whatever. Well, of course, mister. I got just what you need. Please have a seat in the chair, please. For you today only. An Onali? Today Onali. I got a special deal. Somehow, I wonder. No, no, this, uh, it'll work really good. What are you gonna do to me this time? A body waxing. Once again, he's got you trapped in the chair. Better hope this time it'll turn out better. But it turned out great last time. You put soap on my hair and now I have luxurious blonde locks. I fail to see the, the issue. I don't like where this is going. Not one bit. Okay, I am entombed. Don't do it. Oh, God, I'm cringing just thinking about it. There, all is set. Now just lay there and let it get hard. All right, incoming joke. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, how can I be so stupid, you think? I have wax hardening all over my naked body. Though he didn't really take the swimsuit off. Oh, it's also in my hair. Oh, God, it's going to rip all of my hair off my head. This is so unpleasant. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm radioactive as well. Oh, God, that had to hurt. Oh, God, <laughs> was it good for you, too? I don't think I think it's that good for anybody. Well, perhaps the pain was worth it. I do like this clean shaven look. You're the only one. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, King Graham of Daventry. <laughs> oh, God. I just want to leave that one. That's my favorite. But no, we've... Hang on. We gotta get a new one. If you guys haven't been voting, by the way, there's that little forum down below. I'm not sure if I mentioned it the last few videos, but you can submit your ideas for his new trite phrase. Speaking of... Apologies in advance for this next phrase. Okay, so now we look enough like a babe to... Be able to sneak past these guys, I think. Otherwise, oh, there they go. Whoa, hello, baby. Oh, honey, I think I love ya. All right, well, whatever. They're not looking at me. I wonder if I can just get myself caught just by looking at them closely enough. I'm so curious. Nope, I can rub myself right up on them. It doesn't really matter. Hi. What? Well, doesn't matter. Off we go. You did it! You made it across the beach without being caught by the KGB agents. What lies ahead now? Mmm, oh goody, my favorite part. Oh my gosh. How will a guy as clumsy as you are ever manage to hike a trail as narrow as this? All right, here we go. Let's do it little by little. Mouse? No. Nope. All right, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way. There we go. There we go. There we go. This is easy. No problem. Whoop. That was my wig. That was close. Better be more careful. Oop. That was close. Better be more careful. I think it's actually impossible to fall off. You can't die here. The game is basically just trolling you at this point. But in a, um, in a fairly harmless way, it's still hard to navigate and really annoying because this happens every two steps. Actually, it turns out by just mouse clicking the path the entire way, you can do the whole thing without falling at all. Which would be good if anyone ever wants to speed run this game for anything, but just for fun. I'm fine. 
Pausing a moment, you catch your breath before crossing the airport parking lot to the terminal building. And you escape from that wonderful tropical resort. Alright, this is the only time I think you can do this. And it's been a while since I saved. And I know for a fact you have to put yourself back into your suit. Because something bad happens? Ow, whatever, I got the fast forward button. Well rested, you stride boldly across the dirt parking lot to the front door of the main terminal building. By the way, you didn't think you were going to keep all those free points, did you? What free points? What, what, huh? What free points? Boy, are you happy to have it made past all those cliffs. You swear never to return that way. Halt! cries the military policeman. Oh, uh, shoot! Um, gentlemen, what seems to be the problem? All right, you pervert. We got laws against people like you. We don't know cross-dressers hanging around our airport. Hmm, you can get arrested for that? All right, next time you better dress a little bit more formally for a visit to the airport, Larry. Wow, so much has changed since the 80s. Oh, I see what it means about the points. Every time you fall and you recover, quote-unquote, you get a point. I get it. That's kind of cute. But the joke doesn't work unless you play the little jingle so you know you actually have points. Stop it, Larry. There we go. Okay, you slip back into your leisure suit and toss the bikini end soap far over the cliff. Too bad, as you were beginning to enjoy wearing women's clothing. Uh, at least you still have your beautiful blonde hair. Now, I think you also have the option of filling the bikini with money. Like, you just stuff all your money in your, in your bra, and that's good enough. But uh, I wonder if you just throw that overboard as well. That'd be, that'd be bad news, bears. Hello, Hare Krishna. I like George Harrison too. Can we be friends? Mm hmm. Chance the strangely just KGB agent and I didn't save. Have we got a cult for you? If only you could offer them some token of peace and beauty. Now, once again, you've allowed to blah, blah, blah. Now, this is why it's intensely important to have multiple, multiple save files like every time you take pretty much a step in Laser Suit Larry 2. So to get past the KGB agents slash Hare Krishnas, the, you have to offer them a, a peace offering, a symbol of peace, which of course in Hare Krishna dumb is flowers. You know how back in the Vietnam War you stuck like a little flower in the barrel of a gun and it's a really cool photo op and stuff? The only place in this entire world that you can pick a flower is on this screen where you're wandering around lost, which you think you don't do actually do anything, but you're wrong. When you cross over here, and this is why it's a shorter path when you're, um, after you pass through here a couple of times, but it always takes you past these two flowers right here, which don't look like anything, but I believe you reach over and pick off a beautiful flower at its base. Oh, you rationalize, they'll never miss just one flower. And there you go, done. And from what I understand, or what I imagine anyway, once you're at the airport, there is no going back. Uh, speaking of no going back, that means you have to hit the restaurant, the room, and, uh, what was the other place? Uh, the barbershop all over again. Be with you in a minute, folks. All right, you cult members, here you go. Even though I think Hare Krishna is a legitimate religion? Is it, cons is it considered a cult? I don't know. It's the 80s. Here, my little flower child, you tell the KGB-ishna. KGB-ishna? Make love, not money. This so confuses the KG Bishna agents that they stumble off towards their native rental car. Nice going, Larry. Hey, well, whatever. Uh, slow reading aside, it worked. Uh, they're, you're totally still there, dude. Get off screen. Exit stage right. Ah. All right, we made it. Here we are at the airport. Whoa, I, uh, I forgot what we're doing. I guess I just have to wait in line. Okay. Looks like that line's moving a little bit faster. Nope, nope, mistake. That's my part of the line. You get your own. Darn, I tried to trick the game. It's too wise to me. So what happens here is like you, whatever line you stand in just won't move. Well, it will never move. You can never reach the ticket counter. So what I tried to do is that whenever a guy enters a line, uh, he'll get in line and then the person up at the counter will move and then the line might move forward. So there's always three of these Gennaro tuxedo people in line at any given moment. So when they come up to you, I was in the center line, they either veer left or they veer right and go one of those lines. And as soon as they do that, bam, you're in there. So I kind of shimmy myself in there. It's like, aha game, I got you. What You're moved now. And the game's move was to completely freeze time and do nothing. 
So, yeah, there's nothing I can do. So as soon as I move out of here, there they go. Yeah, okay. All right, game. Two shit. Is that the California Raisins? Yes, I meant the Raisin Poster. Uh, another barber shop. Oh, do I dare? Yes. Yes, I do. As much as I like being a blonde, let's see if we can change things up a little bit. Why, it's Rosella from King's Quest IV. Well, welcome, Rosella. How are you? Now, this is the sprite from the... Oh, uh, there were two versions of King's Quest IV. There was the uh, the SCI and the AGI version. And this is sort of like the scaled back version of her. Uh, wait, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Did that game even come out at this point? No, yay, I was right. Okay, so the, um, this game came out in October 27th, 1988. And King's Quest IV came out in September of 1988 so it's about a it's been out for a month and anyway so there's two different versions there's rosella which is sort of like the more blocky version and then i think there's an even more blocky version in the agi engine uh no the sci oh, god damn it all right i know for sure agi is the original adventure game uh engine whatever thing and then they came up with the sci which is the sierra creative interpreter Got it. Okay. I, you guys have told me this in the comments so many times, and it's like, just think alphabetical. A came first, and then came S. Well, whatever. Anyway, point is, there's AGI version of King's Quest IV and an SCI. The AGI one is really rare because no one played it because every... Uh, uh, I wonder if I would recognize it if I call her Rosella. Nope. Just have a seat in the chair there. All right, Rosella, I'm in your capable hands. Can I just get a slight trim? My hair is ridiculously long. Oh, oh, I'd be happy to. Just plop it in my chair there, Goldilocks. I'll take care of those curly locks for you. Gosh, oh, please careful. I hate to lose my full head of hair. Just take a, a little off the back. What are you putting on my head? No! All done, says the barber. What do you think? My hair! It's gone! It serves you right. You should never trust a barber with longer, prettier, blonder hair than yours. Well, at least I look like my passport picture now, although that seems like a small consolation. I'm sorry you're not satisfied. Here, take a bottle of this month's special. When you have time, rub a teaspoon on your hair every day for a month. Soon your hair will be full and rich. But be careful. It's highly inflammatory. El Sile en Louis Gouvane Vin. Which I found out by looking it up because I, as far, this could be S Swedish or Armenian as for all I know. But apparently it's Elvish. It's Elvish for a star shines on the hour of our meeting. Oh, there's a literal translation. A star shines over the time of our meeting. Okay. Well, that's a good little salutation. Hard to pronounce, but adorable. What is on this picture over here? Is this like a kazoo or harmonica? Jim Whistler is about as modern as you can stand. Jim, okay, now I gotta look this up. Oh, as in that Whistler. As in Whistler's mother Whistler. Yeah, I think I would have figured that one out. 1871. Ha! Well, you'll get none of that here. You're in the 80s now. Garish colors for everybody. All right, so what I gotta do is I gotta figure out how to get a ticket. Do I still have my passport? I do. Okay, good. Oh, and I have hair rejuvenator. Wonderful. I think I remember what to do with that. I think I know more or less what to do. Kinda. All right, so here's customs. I don't think I can get past here without a ticket, can I? Wow, so this is airport security back in the 80s. The good old days. Good day, senor. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. Good day, sir, he replies in like fashion. May I please see your <laughs> passport? All right, sure. Uh, show passport. No problem with that. This picture is an excellent uh, likeness, says the customs agent. It must be printed on photographic paper by cold dork. Hey, not nice. Now I must inspect your possessions. Please show me everything you are carrying. Oh dear, do I have anything? Con do I have any contraband? I have a knife. Oh crap. They're not gonna let me on with a knife. Well, okay. Although this is highly unusual in an adventure game. Yes, but I must warn you about carrying that knife on board any aircraft. Okay, you have my word on it. All right. It's like, is this how they deal with, like, people that are trying to blow up the airlines? It's like, well, you got that bomb there, but just make sure you uh, make sure you dump that before you get on the plane. All right? Promise? 
pinky swear. All right, he said, unlocking the gate in the east wall. You may pass. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. Peeling off a hundred off your wad of bills. Here's a little something for you and the missus. I'm not your buddy, you ugly Americano. They all float. And you float too. <laughs> oh, good. I love the movie It. Ah. Oh, my. I'm titillated. All right, Mr. X-Ray, you just let, uh, that looks like knives and stuff. He's sound asleep. Don't wake him up. Ah, screw that. Wake man. Zzz. Oh, never mind. All right. So there was, I don't know what that was. That was creepy. I'm going to look at the screen if I can tell what it is. All right, so here we go. So here's wait for the next one. Look. Screen. Doesn't look interesting. I want the cat. Oh, it's actually a cat-shaped bag. Get bag. I missed. No, 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 no. There we go. You nimbly grab someone else's suitcase from the moving belt, force it open, and discover inside a dead cat. Yuck. You sheepishly close it, return it to the conveyor, and wonder if anybody noticed you. Uh, I should probably report that. Uh, ooh. Maces? Can I just do this with everybody's bag? Just look in there. A pair of maces. No use to me. Is this... This can't be what security was like in the 80s. Doesn't anybody lock up their bags? Uh, that's a violin case full of guns. A Tommy gun in the violin case. No use to me. Whatever. Oh, man. I can make up like such a bandit. Come in here. Open everybody else's luggage. Grab it and just leave and sell it. Nothing of interest in there. A computer. I could totally use that. A computer. Searching through the disk storage box within, you discover a complete set of Sierra Adventure games. <gasps> that you decide they are no use to you. Because you're having plenty of trouble with this game. Nice. What, what was that just passed by? Was that a plane out the window? It looked like a pass on the other side of the window. Uh, whatever. A fully automatic machine gun and some clips of ammo. You realize you have no use for this until you purchase Police Quest 2 The Vengeance. Would you guys have any interest in me playing the Police Quest series? They're kind of boring to me except for the last few there's a this uh looks i uh, huh you nimbly grab the bag a bomb no now let's see um what should i do what should i do um can uh, say i gotta think of this thing outside and fast i can't do anything about it this is completely automatic larry make good decisions on my behalf please look out i've got a bomb Okay. Of course, the agent casually replies, They all float, and you'll float too. <laughs> Look out, I've got a bomb. Get out of here, quick. That was certainly subtle, Larry. You wouldn't want to create a panic. Uh, can I do anything? No, nothing. I can't. This is bad. It's ticking. It seems you're the only one panicked around here, Larry. Whoa, okay. Ignoring their apathy, you vow, I'll rush this outside and throw it safely over the cliffs, protecting these innocent bystanders from harm while making myself a hero in the process. Fame and recognition will surely follow. I'll be invited to the White House where I'll be acclaimed a national treasure. Shortly thereafter, I'll write a titillating bestseller autobiography in which I reveal everything guaranteeing appearances on Donahue and Carson and a seven-figure movie deal signed over a, a power lunch at Spago's in spite of the protestations of my agent and attorneys, which will go on to make me even richer and more famous before retiring to a quiet, unassuming life as a gentleman farmer in the foothills of eastern Madera County. Or then again, maybe not. Hurry, Larry. Sounds like it's about to go off. Oh, no. Kaboom. I'm at the epicenter of a gigantic explosion. Will I survive? Uh, no, I'm fine. I killed all but one ticket agent. That was certainly one way to clear out a crowd, but now look at your suit. Good polyester. Ah, oh, well, at least no one was hurt, but... Why do they all run away from a little firecracker like that? I doubt the timing on that bomb. If you were trying to get it on the plane and it's pretty much going to explode in like the baggage carrier or like the storage before it goes on the plane. That was a really bad attempt. Anyway, tickets, please. Hello, my name is Larry. Huh, I'm Larry Laffer. Would you care to buy a ticket? Says the clerk, obviously unimpressed. Before I do that, we need a new trite phrase. May I please purchase a ticket on your next available flight? Your destination, sir. Anywhere but here. You're in luck, says the ticket agent. We have exactly one seat available in the next two weeks, and it's on the next departing flight. I'll take it. Uh, say, um, if you have no seats available, why are all those men in line? 
They were waiting on keys to the restroom. You presume that explains their sudden departure following the loud noise. Ooh, and the sudden flash flood. Would you prefer smoking or non-smoking? There's only one seat on one flight. It doesn't matter. Non. Aisle or window? Aisle. Any carry-on baggage? None. Luggage to check through? No. We require any bassinet? No. Traveling with children and elderly? No. Bring your pet? No. Do you have a passport or visa? No. Uh, yes, we have a passport. Do you have a bag No. Boy, you Americanos touchy, he snarls. Okay, here's your ticket for one adult, ultra safer, not smoking window, deluxe business class, express, apex excursion, gold label, Wi Fair, non refundable maxi fare, ticket for Kalwa with pillow, blanket, movie, and stereo headphones. Your flight is scheduled to depart from gate one in exactly one minute. Too bad you spent so much time here, you might have made it. Carthage must be destroyed. <laughs> For those uh, history buffs, that is a quote from uh, Cato the Elber, El, yeah, the Elber, the Elbow, the Elder, who ended all of his speeches as a Roman senator with, by the way, furthermore, it's my opinion that Carthage must be destroyed every single goddamn time. We have no time to sw- yeah, no time to spare. Why can't I speak? All right, we have no time to waste. We got to go, go, go. We have our plane leaves in exactly one minute, and knowing this game, they mean exactly one minute. Um, can I go, please? Oh, really? I gotta check in with you again. Did you get rid of your knife? Of course, would I lie to you? Alright, go on. I've seen enough of your stuff. Go on, but please remember, the Carthage must be destroyed. <laughs> oh, it's like a modern-day, uh, an 80s jihadist. Except they want to kill Carthage. And not everything. Alright, we made it. Before we go on there, I think we need to talk to this lady. Lovely weather, eh? You asked the, uh, the waitress. Yep. Hmm. Uh, what does she do? Let's see. Look. Sign. Today only. Blue pate special. Hmm. All right. Buy special. Hey, baby, you shout. Give me one of them blue plate specials. That's blue pate to you, baldy. Hey, I had... Yo! She yells back to the kitchen. Slap me up another bald one. Mm, is that her saying she wants to slap me? Uh-oh. Have I made a horrible, horrible mistake as I wait for this blue pate special? I can't move. Okay, God. She's coming back. I thought I was doomed. Here you go, big boy. One blue, big blue coming at you. She slings the plate on the counter before you. All right. Pay woman. All right. Look. Plate. Eat. Once you tasted it, you wouldn't do that anymore. All right. Take plate. Can I take it with me? Is there a reason? I can't. That's stuck to the counter. It was a complete waste of time. What's in these machines here? The one to your right is labeled broken. Uh, the machine to the left is labeled flight insurance. Hmm. A little large for an insurance machine, isn't it? Mm. All right. Uh, buy insurance. You peel off another $100 bill from your wad of money and insert it into the slot. The machine slurps it up, digests it, considers its authenticity, finds it valid, then begins to whir and shake. And blah, craps out a package. Look, f oh, what kind of airline is this anyway? Well, you suppose a parachute would be pretty good insurance, so you pick it up off the floor and hide it in your inner suit coat pocket. I wonder if I really should get rid of that knife I'm carrying. Whatever, doesn't matter now. Off we go into oblivion. Oh, God. Really? Just walk. Use your legs. I can't. Certainly is a long term. Use your legs. Stop. Don't just stand there. Go. Your mind wanders. Again. Oh, literally wanders. I used to think as a kid, like, there was, there was like a bonus game where you had to, like, click the head or something or catch it. But, no, it's just a visual gag as your mind is literally wandering. <laughs> Fast forward. Oh, God, we finally made it. It's, oh, nice somersault, kid. Well done. Clap. The hell you say. All right, now, it's really easy to miss here. It's also really easy to miss your flight, so I shouldn't tarry too long. If you look at the desk... Uh, there's a terminal where, out of order, display of religious pamphlets on the left of the counter. Okay, so we need that. So get pamphlet. 
I also was really hard for me to learn how to spell pamphlet when I was younger, and this was a perfect way to learn how to master it. That's a good idea. Take a little free reading material to help you while away the time. Is that how you spell while? Is it W-I-L-E? Be right back. I can't tell from this which one is actually logistically or logically correct. It's like, no, I don't want your mailing list grammars. Go away. So apparently they're both correct. Whatever. It doesn't matter. You grab a brochure from the display to shove into your pocket, promising to read it when you get to your seat. It seems like a perfect choice for a long, boring flight. Uh, let's see. Showman ticket. Here's my ticket. You say, handing your ticket folder to the gate attendant. Is this gate number one? It certainly is. But if you want to take the flight listed on this ticket, you better hurry. I've already announced the final boarding call. The stewardess on board will give you your seat assignment. He says the gate attendant. Don't forget your umbrella. Not sure where that came from, but okay. Ah, good. We made it. I really hope this knife in my pocket is not going to bite me in the butt, literally. Oh, wow. This place looks awful. Welcome aboard, sir. Says the stewardess with her best plastic smile. May I see your ticket, please? You give it to her. Your seat is on the left in the second compartment, Mr. Um, Laffer. She says, keeping your ticket. Say, say, haven't I seen you on TV? Weren't you the big winner of the Lucky Life Lottery? She asks. Yep, that's me, baby. You grin and hand her a hundred dollar bill. And here's a little something for you. It appears that what I've heard is true, she says. About me, gorgeous? No, about the Nuez and Riche. They are incredibly crude. She gives you a revest phony smile. Don't forget your umbrella. <laughs> what is that from? Is that from anything? I don't have any control. Why, this plane isn't so small, you think? Look at all the room in here. Mm, this is first class, Larry. There we go. Well... Things are slightly closer back here. What country is this? It looks like it's like some sort of banana republic, but it's got a major airport with art and uh, hairdressers in it and all these business people in tuxes are going back and forth, apparently. And I had to sit next to Donald Trump. Crap. No way, you think to yourself. I can't possibly fit into such a skinny place. Yes, you can. Well, here it goes. <laughs> Ah, whew. Good afternoon, ladies and uh, gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to Flight 1. In the unlikely event of a water landing, there will be no need to panic because we'll all be dead anyway. <laughs> now, don't get upset. This is a little ally humor. Now, when during our flight, of those cute little yellow masks happen to drop down from their overhead compartments, why, just ignore them. They're just, lately, those practical jokers in maintenance have been substituting nitrous oxide for the oxygen again. And remember, in case of emergency, we will get to leave first. Are there any questions? Well, bye. Good luck. Well, I guess this is as good a time as any as we embark on the latest leg of our journey to God knows where. I think it told me once, but it's just a made-up place, so who knows? We'll leave Larry to his fate. Oh, was leaving the knife in my pocket a bad idea? Was there anything else I forgot? Did I make enough saves on the way? Only time will tell. But until then, as always, good night, jelly beans. Good night. <laughs>